Right guys, let's talk about the aerobic system. Um, it's one of the three energy systems that the body has, um, or three ways in which the body takes ADP that's uh, being produced after ATP is broken down to provide energy in the muscle. And one of those three ways that we use to restore ATP. So we've said previously that ATP is the only compound that the muscle can use in order to provide energy for movement. So we need to, once it's broken down, and it, it only takes a few seconds for the ATP that's stored in the muscle to be broken down, we need to resynthesize it. That means we may need to put it back together. We need to find a phosphate and stick it back on to the ADP molecule to res restore it to ATP. We know there's three ways this can happen. Um, the first and the quickest way is the ATP um, PC pathway. The second one is the lactate pathway, and we've got videos on both of those that you can watch. And today we're just going to talk about the aerobic pathway. So the aerobic pathway, the aerobic system, is the most complicated of the three systems by a long way. Um, we'll see some of the steps in just a moment. But let's just um, outline what the key points are that you'll need to know about the aerobic system. So the type of system uh, is essentially, uh, it's a glycolytic system. It runs on um, aerobic glycolysis. Now let's just explain what that means. That, that part of the word there, that, that suffix there, lysis, on the end of glycolysis, that lysis uh, literally just means the breaking down. So glycolysis is the breaking down of glycogen. And you'll notice that lysis suffix appears on the word lipolysis as well that's there in the brackets. Lipolysis is the breaking down of lipids, which is another term for fats. So glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose and glycogen. Lipolysis is the breakdown of fat and fats. Um, and you'll notice, therefore, that the aerobic system can use both glycogen and fat. It can break down glycogen uh, for its fuel source, and it can also take fat and break that down as well. Um, both of those in the aerobic system, as the name suggests, uh, are done in the presence of oxygen. They are aerobic. So the breakdown of glucose and glycogen in the presence of oxygen is aerobic glycolysis. And the breakdown of fat in the same system is called lipolysis. So this system is the system um, that lasts the longest. Um, so once perhaps we've uh, exhausted or com coming towards the end of the effectiveness of the lactate system, if we want to continue to exercise, we're going to have to use the aerobic system. And that requires us to, to lower the intensity a little bit, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So if we want to exercise for more than a couple of minutes, we're going to need to use and make use of the aerobic system. So we're going to need plenty of glycogen and we're also going to need plenty of fat to be able to do that. Um, once the aerobic system has um, pretty much maxed itself out, um, it takes somewhere between 24 and 48 hours um, to replenish and to refill the muscles um, with the glycogen in particular and, and some fat um, back to uh, starting levels. So it's somewhere between 24 to 48 hours to, to return back to get the muscles back to their starting state. And so because this system can last for a long time, it's really useful for long distance events, endurance events, things like the triathlon, the marathon and so on. OK, so let's have a think about how the aerobic system actually works. Like all three systems, the whole point of the system is to resynthesize ATP. Uh, because once we've broken down ATP that's already available in the muscle, we've got ADP there and we need to uh, find some energy from somewhere in order to resynthesize ATP. And so in the aerobic system, we'll start off with glycogen and glucose, which are very similar things, basically sugar. Um, glycogen, you remember, is the stored form of glucose. So glycogen present in the muscle cell, present in the liver, and glucose present in the bloodstream. And that is the initial source uh, that the aerobic system will use, the initial fuel source that the aerobic system will use, and it will begin to break it down in order to provide energy required for ATP resynthesis. And there are certain enzymes uh, that will help this process uh, by speeding up the process. Um, so those first three 
um, steps are basically the same as the lactate system. You'll notice the same uh, first three stages where we've got the breakdown of glycogen and glucose, we've got enzymes speeding up the process, we've got energy being released. And when we get to this point, um, we've already produced about, for every molecule of glycogen, we've produced about three ATP molecules. But we've also produced some pyruvic acid. And if you'll cast your mind back to the lactate system, you'll remember that that pyruvic acid is really important because when that pyruvic acid is in the presence of oxygen, it can be useful. But when there's no oxygen available, that pyruvic acid dissociates and splits apart essentially and becomes lactic acid or lactate which are very similar compounds and that's that's why the lactate system is called the lactate system because there's no oxygen available so after these three steps we're producing a whole bunch of lactate which is being um, sent into the bloodstream and making the blood and the muscles more and more acidic but at this point in the aerobic system something different happens because when we produce pyruvate and oxygen is present this time, that pyruvate can be broken down in the presence of oxygen to produce, amongst a few other things, to produce something called acetyl-CoA, acetyl-coenzyme A, but we'll just call it acetyl-CoA. And that acetyl-CoA is really important. What's interesting about the aerobic system, and I've already mentioned um, where we're going with this, is that that acetyl-CoA can also come not just from pyruvate that's come from glycogen and glucose, but it can also be created from fats, lipids, fatty acids that are um, in the bloodstream, that have, that have been sent into the bloodstream to be made available uh, for a fuel for the aerobic system. So what we want is acetyl-CoA. We can get it via pyruvate, which has come from glyco uh, uh, glycolysis, or we can get it from the breakdown of fatty acids. Now, the breakdown of fatty acids to produce acetyl-CoA is called beta oxidation. Once we've got this acetyl-CoA, though, whether it's come from glycogen or whether it's come from fat, once we've got it, it then um, the magic happens. It goes into uh, the Krebs cycle, which is also sometimes called the citric acid cycle. But the Krebs cycle is a, a bunch of reactions, a whole load of different reactions that happen um, in order and takes acetyl-CoA and uses it to produce more ATPs or more energy in order to resynthesize ATPs. So we've got more energy produced um, from the Krebs cycle. So we had some already, um, same as the lactate system, we've already produced about three ATPs. We're gonna produce some more now in the Krebs cycle. Once that acetyl-CoA has passed through the Krebs cycle, it continues on its way uh, into the mitochondria and experiences the electron transport chain. It goes through the electron transport chain and in the electron transport chain, or the ETC for short, yet more ATPs are produced. So we produced ATPs before, um, in the first few steps, in the breakdown of glycogen. We've produced more ATP molecules through the Krebs cycle, and we've produced yet more in the electron transport chain. And along this pathway, we've, we've got some byproducts. So we're producing these ATP molecules, uh, which are there for muscular contraction in the muscle and so on. At the same time, we're producing byproducts. And the three key byproducts that are produced are carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. So we've got a whole load of energy being produced here. And this energy, these ATP molecules, are then used to fuel or to drive muscular contraction um, further, further on. For, for a much longer period of time than the other two energy systems. So we've resynthesized ATP now. And roughly speaking, one glycogen molecule can resynthesize a, around about 34 new ATP molecules. We think perhaps um, if in a perfect world, if the, all the chemistry worked perfectly without any flaws and there were no issues uh, with leaking membranes or anything like that, 
we would potentially produce about 38 new ATP molecules, but these things are never perfect. So anywhere between about 29 up to around about 34 ATP molecules are produced through um, aerobic glycolysis. So you'll be thinking already about the benefits of this system. So let's go through them. Um, just a few to mention. The first one, obviously, is that we can produce energy for a very long time because we have a very large store of glycogen and a very large store of fat in the body. And provided we can get enough oxygen in, then the aerobic system can continue for a very long time. A second benefit is that in this system, we can actually use fat as one of the fuels. And that means if we're using fat, that means we're not using glycogen. And if we're not using glycogen, then our glycogen stores will last longer. And since it's muscle glycogen, uh, as well as liver glycogen, that pretty much determines how tired you feel. If we can make those stores last longer, we won't feel as tired. So if we can use fat as a fuel, and we do in the aerobic system, provided there's enough oxygen available, if we can use fat as a fuel, then we won't feel as tired as soon. So it's a, a great system to offset the feeling of tiredness. Thirdly, compared to the other systems where um, the yield of ATP, the amount of ATP produced, that's what the word yield means, is quite low in the other two systems, there's a massive amount of energy produced uh, in this aerobic system. Fourthly, uh, amongst the key benefits, are the fact that essentially there are no harmful waste products. And those waste products that are produced, the body is very well adapted, very well adept at using, reusing or getting rid of. So oxygen, water, no real issues with those as, as waste products. And carbon dioxide, we know that the whole cardiovascular and respiratory system is set up to be able to remove and get rid of carbon dioxide. What's the disadvantage of it? Well, essentially, because it's such a complicated system, because it's such a complicated set of reactions, it takes a while to get going. So it's just a slow to get going system. It takes a while to really get uh, sufficient oxygen supplied. And this is what accounts for uh, the concept of oxygen deficit or oxygen death. It's simply if the system could kick in and be 100% efficient straight away, there would never be anything like oxygen debt, but that just isn't possible. So that's really the only disadvantage or the key disadvantage that you need to know about the aerobic system. That's all for the aerobic system. Slightly longer video than usual, but I hope that's been helpful. Um, thanks for watching.